Adventures, Adventures in Paradise. Starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. Haunted. Guest stars, Kim Hunter. Elaine Stritch. Brought to you by... was king diving at the reef. Husband did not see her come back and went looking for her. Now, Vanessa, take it easy. Take it easy. If I know Kenneth, he'll come out of this alive. You have to be good to die young. I didn't mean this to happen. I know I you didn't. I went to my cabin to change it. I forgot to tell him I was there. I didn't forget. I didn't think he Vanessa, cared. Vanessa, listen to me. Nobody's blaming you. They, they mustn't give up. They've got to find him. Vanessa, Vanessa, I face this. It's no use. do now? Her drawing must be reported. You have to come to town with me. Will you go back and get on the yacht? We've been through enough. Come on, I'll handle this. When did my husband come aboard? I'm sorry, Mrs. Charles. No one's come aboard but yourself. Where are you? No use hiding, Kenneth. I know you're here. I saw where you walked. I know you're trying to scare me. Well, it isn't funny.
have been a melancholy sojourn for you, Madame Charles. But it is now no longer necessary that you stay here. You can leave Tahiti whenever you wish. I'm sorry your husband was not found, but that is to be expected, what with the ocean currents and the sharks. <coughs> After three days, that may be presumed. I have had it entered so in the registry, and uh, I brought you a copy of the certificate. Thank you. Yeah, but, uh, madame, there are many things to see on the island. Uh, may I hope that you will prolong your visit with us? I must leave at once. Bien. Merci, Capitaine. Madame? My orders, ma'am? I want you to take the Taruna back to Honolulu and put it up for sale. I shan't ever use it again. Charles would like to continue the voyage in another boat. I think the change do her good. I see. What other boat? Well, you see what you can come up with. American dollars a week. Princess and gentlemen, here we are. I hope I didn't take you away from anything more important. More important than $600 a week? There's no such thing. Well, what's the deal then? Mulligan, four specials. Captain Troy will be putting out to sea again. Now, wait just a minute. Captain Rivers, you say Mrs. Charles wants to give up her yacht, the Taruna, to charter a trading schooner like that Tiki? Come on, there must be a reason. What is it? Well, I was afraid you'd ask that. How did the lady put it? Our dead relations don't stay where they belong at the bottom of the sea. Superstitious? It's nothing that you and I should be concerned about. I tell you, Captain, you better play it safe and buy a little charm from a witch doctor. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Mrs. Charles. Well, that's quite all right, but I'm not Mrs. Charles. I'm Ethel Forrester. I'm, I'm a friend of hers. I see. Are you Captain Troy? That's right. Uh, you and Mrs. Charles will share this cabin. Oh, let me take your bag. You don't have to be nice to me. Mrs. Charles has the dough. I haven't got a dime. Not even for you, Captain. <laughs> well, where is Mrs. Charles? went off chin diving early this morning. It's her escape from reality. Captain Troy, you're dealing with a woman who has no sense of time. Uh, it's a good way to miss the boat. <laughs> going after it? That's right. More shock treatment. You see, nobody disturbs Vanessa while she's swimming. She'll have to get used to it. He's ready to sail. Oh, what a shame. It was lovely down there. Hey, could you tell your captain I'll just be another hour or so? I thought you wanted to sail today. I do. 
Last call. What? Hey, put me down. You put me down. Don't think your captain isn't going to hear about this. I'm the captain. Want to call the charter off? It's okay with me. I don't mind. What do you say? No. Took me by surprise, picking me up like that. Hasn't anyone ever done it before? No. You mean nobody's ever minded that you've been late to appointments? I keep my appointments. I'm not irresponsible. But you are Vanessa Sutton Charles. That does make a difference, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I'm a perfectly normal, average person. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm rich, and that does make a difference. I live extremely well, and I enjoy what my money buys. That's no sin. No, it isn't. You just don't seem to be a very happy person. I don't think that's any of your concern, Captain. You're right. Perhaps I should apologize. Yes, perhaps you should. I apologize. Apology accepted. out of going underwater, don't you? Mmm, I like the solitude down there. Of course, Abel says I shouldn't be alone so much. The natives, for some reason or other, think I'm crazy. You want to know why? Why? There's the native legend, the dead live underwater. Sometimes a pearl diver sees them or thinks he does. When that happens, he knows his days are numbered. They call it the curse of Tupapao, the spirit of the living dead. When that happens, he puts his affairs in order, says goodbye to his wife and children, lays down and dies. Will that happen to me, I wonder? If I run into Kenneth down there? Why did I think of that? I've been trying to forget him. I'll go with you the next time. I don't believe in legends. All right, I'll take you up on that. Uh, excuse me now while I change. like everything's ship shape from where I was sitting. <laughs> yes, you underestimate Vanessa. She took the shock rather well. You're wrong, Captain. It was you I underestimated. All set and ready to go. All right, let's get the boat out of here. <laughs> Well, looks like this is it, all over again. Never leaving her alone, hiding the sleeping pills, trying to be cheerful, keeping her spirits up from morning till night. Just worries me to death. You've been through this before? I'm afraid so. After her first marriage. What happened then? Now, well, Vanessa was just 20 when she married Bob, her first husband. The day of the wedding, they flew north to her ranch in Montana. Vanessa insisted on flying the plane herself, and they crashed on a mountain in the high Sierras. She spent three days with his body before rescue reached them. 
top of that, she blamed herself for everything, of course. That's rough. But shouldn't she be over it by now? It wasn't easy. Well, for Vanessa, in any case. It took her ten years to get over it, and Kenneth helped, of course. He was her answer, and nobody could convince her otherwise. What was Kenneth like? Well, he was gay, witty, attractive, and after every cent he could get his hands on. She didn't seem to mind that. All she wanted was to be near him, because you see, fear's a real problem. She's terrified of being alone. And now Kenneth's gone, and it starts all over again. Captain Troy, have you ever heard of the compulsion to confess to a crime you never committed? Yes, I have. But what's that got to do with Vanessa? You see, that's just it. It's ridiculous. It's all in her mind. But she feels directly responsible for Kenneth's death, just as she did in the case of her first husband. The result is a subconscious drive to admit guilt, to blame herself for something she had nothing to do with. What are you getting at? Well, let's face it. Do you believe in ghosts? No more than you do. Well, then, who do you think put that cap in your cabin? You think Vanessa did herself? May I see her now, Doctor? Only for a moment. I've given her a mild sedative, and I want her to rest. Now, if Mademoiselle will be good enough to tell me a few more things about the patient. Feeling better? Mm -hmm. Good. There's nothing to be afraid of here. You're in a hotel run by a couple of my friends. There'll be somebody around to keep an eye on you. You? Me. Want to talk? Ethel thinks that your subconscious has been playing tricks on you, that you've been doing the haunting yourself. Believe me, it isn't that. Then it's your idea that something's really been haunting you. There's no such thing as ghosts. You'll be fine in a little while. And we're going sailing on the Tiki. And there's going to be nobody aboard who isn't alive. That I'll guarantee. Remember, it's a promise.
I'll come. One look at your face, and I knew you needed it. Have they found a lady? Yes, in a dead faint on the beach. Dead, aren't you? It's not my father's pleasure to give me a famous name. But I'm a doctor, not an author, Miss Forrester. Though my practice is not conventional medicine, let's say. I give advice to people in certain kinds of trouble. Usually they come to me. But in this case, I thought it wiser not to wait. Very interesting. Am I in trouble? Not you, but your friend. She has had a visit from the dead. Has she not? Uh, tell me, where do you get all your information? The island talks of nothing else. But nobody needs to tell me. I'm receptive. I recognize evil forces when they are at work, and I know ways of guarding against them. For a small fee, I take it. This is not a time to talk of money. Your friend is in danger. Now, today, tonight, she has already gone to the water's edge. Next, the long canoe will come ashore for her, and then that will take her away with them at the turning of the tide. We must see to it right away that she's protected. Go to her, let her put the on. Tell her to wear it at all times, but most particularly during the hours of darkness. Later I will see her myself. I will tell her what must be done to make her dead one stay in his home in the water. No sail, Balzac. This is a witch doctor with an impressive line, but don't fall for it. Well, don't you worry about me, Captain Troy. I'll stick to my vitamins. Thank you very much. I don't understand you, Captain Troy. Why is it wrong if the lady wears a ticket? That's right if you do yourself. It just depends on how much faith you place in them, doctor. Anyway, it'll take a whole lot more than a good luck charm to straighten Mrs. Charles out. I didn't come here to argue with you. I hope for our own good. The lady herself will be more receptive. Leave Mrs. Charles alone, do you hear? You are hurting my arm. Mulligan, Renee's. <laughs> Say it again. Can't hear you. OK. Uh, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Captain Troy. Lieutenant Paul wants to see you on the beach. A body was washed ashore. Bring the lady. Thanks, Mulligan. Let's go. Me? What for? It might be Kenneth. Thank you for coming, mademoiselle. Of course, it's just possible that it is some poor devil of a sailor who has fallen overboard from the ship. I'm not Monsieur Charles at all. But uh, it's better that he find out. He's been in the water for some considerable time. It's no longer a pleasant sight. All right, I just didn't get it over with now. Lieutenant? Yes. Have you any disposition of the body? Well, you go right here. I'll take the responsibility. Good. Happy two papa to you, too.
Ben's body has been found, Vanessa. Well, isn't that better than wondering about it? What difference does it make? People will think I still think I'm responsible. Are you? I came in from swimming when the storm broke and I didn't tell Kenneth I was there. Maybe I forgot. Maybe it was a subconscious wish that he'd go look for me and get killed. I don't know what to think. You're behaving foolishly. You're torturing yourself. Nobody there now. I saw him. I saw him. I saw him. You couldn't have. Oh, I did. I did. But Kenneth's dead. You found his body, remember? I'll see you in the morning aboard the Tiki. Adventures in Paradise will continue following station identification. And now, back to Adventures in Paradise. You have lost count, monsieur. 
I took six. But that's all. It could have been a very serious injury, that. How did you do it? I bumped into a door. Oh. <laughs> you must be more careful next time, eh? Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. No, I might have been imagining things when I thought I saw something over here last night. But I don't think so. Somebody laid for me. Somebody set up a decoy for me and sapped me on the head when I tackled it. Well, is the tiki ready to sail? No. Nope. Now what? No crew. It's impossible to get anything out of them. But I have an idea as to Papa. They feel it's bad luck to sail on a ship with a dead man's wife. Not my boys, I know them too well. Let's sail. I think somebody's put a taboo on the tiki. Who would play such an evil trick on you, darling? As long as you're asking questions, you'd want to bash my skull in. And who do you know that leaves wet footprints and wears a lay of seaweed? What are you talking about? when I came in and found you. Well, if you can't lick them, join them. Good morning, Captain Troy. I was expecting you. It's good you recovered so quickly. I gather you don't have to be told what happened to me. You know. Yes, I know. The dead walked among us last night. They came from the sea. Meaning it was Kenneth Charles? What do you want? He came to claim the leaving. There's no closer tie than a husband for his wife. It wasn't a ghost who put a taboo on the tiki. It was somebody alive. What'll it cost me to take it off so I can sail? First, I will have to see how soon. Of course, uh, how much the other party is willing to pay to keep it on. Who am I bidding against? It's not Vanessa Charles, is it? Is it Ethel Forrester? Miss Forrester is not a believer in my powers. Just the same, there's somebody here on the island who wants to keep Vanessa Charles where her husband drowned. And I think you know who it is. If you have suspicions of any wrongdoings, Captain, it's your duty to take them to the police and see what we will say about them. It would be better, though, if you would listen to me. You are involved in something deeper than you can know. Please, I beg of you, be careful what you do. you think you at least ought to try to get over that now? I don't know why I should be afraid. If he's trying to come back to me, I ought to be glad. I ought to welcome him. Why, if anybody ever heard you talk like that, they'd think you were out of your... I'm right glad to see you. What happened to you? I couldn't exactly say. I must have been looking the wrong way at the wrong time. It's all over. This morning, very early. I came to tell you we can't sail this morning. Well, we know all about that, Balzac told us. And on top of everything else, Vanessa insists on going skin diving. Could you do me a favor and see if you can talk her out of it? Ethel's right, you shouldn't. Are you going to try to stop me, too? 
Either that or go with you. No, Adam, it wasn't. Why not? If you're going to act like a child, then you should be treated like a child. Vanessa, but think he's sailing this afternoon. I won't stay long. You don't really expect to run into your dead husband out there, do you? You let me go. Look, it's a Saturday night. Everyone's celebrating. How about a bovine drink before we sail? All right, later. There's one waiting for us at Renee's. I'll come for it. Now let me go. Must it be out there? Don't worry. Kenneth has nothing to do with it. No? Is it a date? It's a date. What time? When the sun's over the yard, I'm captain. be drunk at once, or they go bad. I know, I know. Well, hi. Hi, Captain. These are too good to waste. They look divine. Thank you. I tell you, I must live right. Where is she? Where is who? Well, Vanessa, I thought she was with you. I haven't seen her. Isn't she back from her swim? You know, if she was back, she'd be here. But you don't think anything's happened to her? I don't know what I'm worried about. That woman swims like a shark. And even sharks have sense enough to keep away from the reef in a tide run. But you know, I'd better take a look. You want me to go with you? No, thanks. You stay here and ask Mulligan to build another round. That's easy. <laughs> Make it three this time. And if I'm late, you drink them and keep them coming. In that case, take your time.
What's with you? Have you seen Vanessa? No. You got more trouble with ghosts? No, this is for real. Look, call Lieutenant Paul and have him come up here right away. I'm gonna check Vanessa's cottage. It is fortunate you call for me at once. She had drunk enough to kill her. She's out of danger now. It's no use going to her. She cannot recognize anyone yet. After what happened, she shouldn't be left alone. The nurse is with her. And I have a man on duty there. Uh, the drug. Was it self-administered? It is hard to believe it could have been done any other way. There's your husband, alive and wet. Why, <laughs> Why did you want to kill me? Now, really, Vanessa, that money of yours was an awful temptation, you know. You could have had it. Maybe he had to have more. Maybe he had to have Ethel, too. That was Ethel's idea in the first place. How do you expect to get away with it? Amnesia? Reappear from the dead after six months? Or something like that. You and Ethel. We thought Kenneth was dead. Gone. But now it's a question of this body that we found, which Miss Forrester identified as this man Shah. He was probably some sailor washed ashore.
I'm not running. I simply want to know what I'm charged with. As an accomplice in attempted murder. That is enough. If it isn't, find her gun. I think she's the one who shot at me this afternoon. Captain Troy, why in the world would anybody want to shoot you? So we couldn't take off in the Tiki, and Kenneth could have more time to finish off Vanessa. Did you hear what they're saying about us, darling? A little late for that, don't you think? No. I seem to be, in general, disfavored. It's over now, isn't it? Yes. What do you think you'll do now? Oh, go back to Honolulu, I suppose. Well, remember, if you get married again, to knock at your husband's door when you come back from a swim. I'll remember that. I'll escort you back to your hotel, madame. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Is everything all right? Oh, Renee. Yes, Adam? About those charters you've been getting me. Yes, Adam? One more charter like that. And I'll put you over my knee and I'll paddle you so hard. No. Adam, no! Adventures in Paradise. Appearing in the next Adventures in Paradise will be guest stars Alexis Smith, Albert Salmi, Nobu McCarthy, Kay Medford, and Joey Foreman. Somewhere off the Fiji Islands, the 787 carat diamond has been lost, and the gentleman who charters the tiki would commit almost any crime to find it. Yes. <laughs> start remembering. You say that the plane went down south of here. Well, I see me talking to a native on the shores of a faraway tropical isle. <laughs> I think you should never have come here. Next on Adventures in Paradise, somewhere south of Suva. Until then, thank you for watching and aloha.